I don't think I could do better than this. I don't think I could receive a better treatment than this. I don't think somebody who's really got their A games going on in their life would want to pursue me because I feel like a failure. You must not let anything that you're seeing make you feel like, am I not worthy because of this? Am I not worthy because he's still saying this? If there's any bullshittery that's still happening, it's because of your old beliefs playing out, but it's no longer a part of your reality. And that's why you are open to anything that is best for you. For those of you who feel defeated by not getting the things that you want, I want to remind you that you are still worthy exactly for who you are. And this video will help you navigate out of the place of anxiety to a place of being present and being accepting exactly for where you are. Let's get started. One, refusing to put myself down for not having the relationship that I want. The thing with society is that if you are in a friend group where everybody is getting married before 30, if you're in a friend group where getting engaged is the biggest deal of your life or getting promoted plus engagement plus marriage means success, then you're going to feel very defeated when you can't have those external things. But in my case, I've always known that I wanted to create legacy. If it wasn't a YouTube channel, I wanted to build something of my own. And those things Things require time and energy. Now, of course, I want to be in a loving, beautiful and harmonious relationship. But these days, I came to the acceptance that the only reason that was blocking me from having that love is that I wasn't believing I could meet somebody who was on the same page as me. Or if I have already met that person, then he could change his mind to be on the same page as me. So what I used to do was blame myself for not having the quality of the girl who could have the exact love that she wants. It's not like I'm getting married in 2024, then divorcing in 2026 or I'm marrying in 2025 then realizing that he's not the one by 2020 seven and i've seen so many examples like that because people were in a rush to hit certain life milestones such as taking my time to rebuild myself to keep reinventing myself regardless of what age i'm at is a much better way for me to feel content and feel at peace with where i am without having to be like oh it's your fault that you couldn't find the one yet or it's your fault that you're alone and single because these days i honestly don't feel that lonely which leads to number two accept the situation as it is with no judgment now for the last two years since my previous previous breakup I actually couldn't come to terms with the fact that my life was the way it was and the reason why all these harassing situations were happening to me day in and day out for a long period of time was because I blame myself for not being able to meet the person who doesn't give up his life for me but together we're walking on the same path where we are filling each other's cups we are achieving our individual goals but at the same time we make quality time for each other and while I did meet somebody who was really really close to that man but every time he wasn't giving me exactly what I wanted I would internalize the blame and not accept the situation as it is. I've always had this story replay in my mind that because I don't have this kind of job with stable income, because I don't have this kind of life right now for where I am, therefore I have to earn love by working for it. And while I wasn't exactly working for his love, but I realized that I was joining this not-for-profit organization because I wanted to spend time with just one person in a different way rather than just going on dates or being in the bedroom. And I just came to ask myself one day that if I don't get to have this relationship are you still going to put in the free labor and my answer was no i deserve so much more than to work for anybody for free and at the same time if i don't get the relationship that i want then i'm not going to fight for it anymore i'm going to accept the situation as it is that it's okay that you don't have it right now it's okay that your 3d is not reflecting right now it's okay that things are not showing you the way that you romanticize your life to be right now as long as you feel okay the 3d will always reflect how you feel about yourself so never feel defeated that you don't have exactly what you see other people having because there's always two sides of the story to everything just because you see romantic pictures on instagram it doesn't mean that that couple is romantic 24 7 and even if they are romantic 24 7 there may be other issues in their life that you never know of it is so much easier to just come to peace with the fact that my life looks like this today and i'm happy with that i'm okay with it but that doesn't mean i'm going to stagnate i'm going to accept it while still work on my life so that i get what i want and it's the most peaceful place to be in honestly. Three, direct my focus on following my joy. Now back to the previous point where I said I was working for free to compensate for the fact that I couldn't achieve a certain life milestone by a certain age and I felt ashamed that if he was dating me I would actually hinder him from his growth. But later on I start to really realize my inherent worth and something just clicked within me that if it's not going to be this person then it doesn't matter. If at the end of the day this person never realizes my inherent worth I'm not going to be the one to abandon myself. That is not going to be a reflection of my inherent worth but I'm going to choose me and 
and take care of me regardless. And that is exactly by following my joy. Since I had much more free time and free energy where I can only focus on what I want to achieve in my life, I then asked myself, what are some things that bring you so much joy in your day-to-day -day life? And the answer was beach clips. At the time I was doing beach clips, I was really, really enjoying the process. But after that, the whole lifestyle wasn't sustainable right now. So I took a break from beach clips. But then I asked myself again, what do you enjoy doing besides the beach clip? And there's so many activities. Those activities may be taking myself to swim at Manly, taking myself to northern beaches far away from where I live, and just having the solo dinner, buying whatever I want at a small capacity, and just feeling like I have the freedom to experience happiness, whether the food costs $5 or $20. I also found so much joy in dressing myself up with all the things that I have right now. And this lady that I always buy from gave me free nails for $5. And I'm just thinking, oh my God, I feel so grateful because now I can spend those $10 on something else, which I did. And that's what I mean by following your joy. The other thing is also working on your purpose and passion. For me, I just really enjoy filming YouTube videos in this capacity right now. Yes, I know I could make viral videos by filming more complicated things and making my edits more fancy but right now I just really want to enjoy how much I've progressed because it's not too much or too less and it makes me feel so alive each day that if this guy doesn't want to show up for me then I'm honestly not mad at him because that's his life and I have my life and as long as I'm happy with where I am every single day and meeting all these targets that I set for myself in a happy way then it doesn't matter what anybody else does it doesn't matter if I'm going on dates or not because I'm not going to compromise my work or my life quality for anyone anymore and that leads to four which is prioritizing self-care over external success now the thing with following your joy as previously stated is that it's unconditional you're doing it because you genuinely enjoy the process but the minute everything feels like a transactional target like I have to put in this amount of work to get something in return I have to swim 20 laps in order to feel worthy I have to run this many kilometers I have to film these many videos I have to use these metrics to film my videos so that I always get the top views then life becomes a suffering okay I understand that metrics are important but while I'm steadily growing this channel why do I not have the rights to take care of myself and just take things slowly Low so that I never have to experience a crash or a burnout. The minute I prioritized this kind of self-care mentality, that's when everything in my life just kept improving and improving and improving week after week. Okay, on my YouTube channel, you may see that some videos don't perform well, but outside of what you're seeing on the screen, you have no idea on how happy one person can be when they're not attached to an external outcome. For me, in my case, I'm choosing to treat my YouTube like I am building my stamina every single week. So even though I'm not getting the exact results that my ego wants, but I'm getting better and better from doing this consistently. It's like going to the gym where the more you go, the more your muscles get stronger. And the more your muscles get stronger, the higher your self-confidence is. And that is exactly how I'm feeling right now every single week. And once my internal world is stabilized, I don't have the energetic capacity to notice, oh, he ghosted me? Oh, he didn't reply yet? Oh, what is he doing? Or oh, what is that person doing? Or oh, what event is happening? What am I missing out on? Who's going on this vacation? Who is buying this luxury thing? Things, even though these things may be happening simultaneously, but because I'm so oriented in my self-care practice, because I know when to stop consuming or when to stop working, I start to feel like that is it. I don't need to take in any information that I don't want to see in my 3D reality and just channel my energy back to working on my purpose. And it's honestly been such a positive, beautiful loop that I just don't feel the need to care who wants to treat me a certain way. If they can't show up for me, then I don't have to be attached. I can just let go because I'm focusing all my energy on improving myself, on feeling like a badass every time I film these videos and post them on YouTube. Five, gifting myself experiences that I want my partner to give to me weekly. So yesterday I took myself to Manly to swim 14 laps again. Ever since I've been investing a lot of time on this YouTube channel, I wasn't able to swim as strongly as I could last year. And I made a promise to myself that the minute I could figure out a sustainable system for my YouTube, that's when I'm going to come back and really focus on the things that really made me feel confident in the past and one of those things was swimming so I started to really focus my energy on becoming the divine goddess version of my reality again by increasing my laps without burning myself out and it's honestly been the best 
gift ever. And after I finished my swim, I would take myself to see the sunset alone, walk alone on the manly strip and really having the time of my life. And once I finished taking myself on a day, then I could feel recharged and come back and work on this YouTube channel. And it's like the best positive feedback loop ever. See, even though I look like an extrovert, but deep down, I like to spend time alone so much. I love it when I don't have to cater towards anybody's needs. In other words, if I'm dating somebody and I'm not exactly sure if we'll be together long term, then I'll have to expend 50% energy to make him feel good. Even if I want to be myself, but in a way, I kind of have to listen to what he wants to say. But when I'm by myself, I could think any thoughts that I want. I could speak to myself in any way that I like. I can go and buy anything I want to buy. I could go and eat anything I want to eat, whether it's a $5 pizza slice, whether it's some sort of tiny snack. And it's such a beautiful, beautiful feeling. Now, even though back then I used to feel really anxious that I'm not holding anybody's hand while seeing the sunset, why can't I have the things that those couples have? Why can't I sit next to somebody on the sand that would cuddle me for two hours? But ever since focusing on my YouTube channel and also my internal growth, those thoughts start to shift to things like, I actually really enjoy how my life is unfolding. I actually feel very proud that I'm always happy being alone. And that doesn't mean I don't want a relationship, but in the meantime, while I don't have the exact, exact thing that I want yet, I actually really enjoy all the unfolding of it. And that's what matters the most. So instead of you using a dating app to text 10 people or find your options and filter out the best option to go and watch the sunset with him, why not come back and channel all the energy back into you to add value back into yourself and then take yourself out to every single experience that you want the guy to take you to so that you have true autonomy over your life and you don't have to risk feeling bummed out that you didn't meet the right person on this date and you've neglected yourself for that weekend. The more you can fall in love in your own companionship, that's when the relationship will easily come to you and not just any kind of weirdness relationship, but the actual, actual thing that your heart wants, the kind of thing where the guy doesn't compromise his life to be with you and you don't compromise your life to be with him, but he is successful on his own and he's joining the journey with you while you are also thriving on your own and you guys are creating a harmonious and beautiful dynamic together. Six, being open to any possibility that is best for me. Now for the last two years, because I boxed myself in this inner identity that I had to work to earn love, I have to achieve a certain goal, I have to help him achieve his career goals. This year, I truly decided that as much as I had fun doing that at the time, but I'm not that person anymore. I want to be my own Patty in my true divine powers. And Patty in her true divine power does not give out free labor. She does not do any tasks where she's not going to get a high investment of returning. And because I've adopted this new identity since around January, I'm very detached of who I will end up with in the end. If it's not this person, then it's not gonna be this person. And I'm not going to feel anything besides gratitude for the situation. At the same time, it doesn't mean that I'm spending my free time looking outwards, going to the bar or trying to go on a dating app to see what options are available for me. I trust that if I stay in my true divine power, the right person will truly find me. And even though it can be a challenge for you to get to this state, but once you really do arrive at this state, you will realize that you don't need to close your option entirely based on what your ego thinks is best for you. For the last two years, because my ego was saying to me, you have to work to earn love. If you don't work to earn love, you only end up with losers or you'll end up with people that have nothing going on with their life. And that is just a self-fulfilling prophecy where you're going to start believing that I only deserve to be in this kind of dynamic. This person is my one and only. And even though till this day, I still appreciate the person, but I'm really open to the idea of people that are resonating at my caliber to enter my life. There is no wasting each other's times. There is no codependency happening. The guy must have his own life and he must have his own ambitions. And I must also work on myself continually. My anxiously attached self didn't believe that I could meet somebody who really has his shit together. And where coming together to be a power couple. But my anxious self always thought, I don't think I could do better than this. I don't think I could receive a better treatment than this. I don't think somebody who's really got their A games going on in their life would want to pursue me because I feel like a failure. So therefore, if I don't work and strive or try to be in this person's life, I would only end up with people who are not happy with their salaries. So I was so done being stuck in that parallel reality. And I want to remind you that if you want to step into a new parallel reality where you're getting the exact kind of person and the exact kind of treatment that you want. You must not let the 3D situation trigger you. You must not let anything that you're seeing make you feel like, am I not worthy because of this? Am I not worthy because he's still saying this? 
If there's any bullshittery that's still happening, it's because of your old beliefs playing out, but it's no longer a part of your reality. And that's why you are open to anything that is best for you. Seven, not being afraid of engaging in physical intimacy when it feels right. Recently, I've allowed myself to engage in physical intimacy with somebody that I really, really trust. And if you were to ask me, how did I feel about it? My answer is, it feels pretty good. It honestly just felt like I was gifting myself another beautiful experience that spikes up my dopamine. But it doesn't mean that it's the peak happiness of my life. It's just an addition to what I already do for myself. A lot of girls would actually feel insecure about what happens afterwards. For me, this person is somebody that I trust with my whole heart. But if you're meeting somebody random and you're doing this, of course you're going to feel bad about yourself. Because along the way, you must not shame yourself for having sexual desires. If there are times where you really want to gift yourself that experience of touch, feeling like I actually deserve this, and I know how to compose myself in a way where if nothing comes out of this later, then who cares? It's probably going to work out later on anyway. But this kind of end state is very, very rare for people that have anxious attachment style. And that's why before you even do these things, you want to nail the basics and that is prioritizing self-care over external success, prioritizing you and pedestalizing you first before anything else. You are the person that's either going to judge if you are low value or not. For me, I don't see myself as low value. So no matter what happens afterwards, I'm just going to come back and continue my life the way it has been. And again, it depends on who you're engaging it with and whether this guy is truly caring of you or not, whether you actually do have a beautiful friendship outside of the bedroom. I personally found that if you suppress your sexual desire too much, then you might end up giving those experiences to the wrong people. So if you found somebody that you trust and you feel like he's never going to hurt me in the long run, even if he pisses me off here and there, but he's a great person, then I want you to give yourself permission to experience what you want to experience. Because life is too short to hinder yourself from beautiful love-making experiences. If it feels beautiful, and empowering for you. Just give yourself the experience and don't judge yourself for it. Just let it go and trust that as long as you work on your passion and purpose, everything in your life is going to unfold in the exact way that you want it to anyway. Eight, not having any milestones that I feel pressure to hit. And recently, some unfortunate things have happened in our family. But after I stopped crying yesterday, I asked myself, so who are you going to be after this? Would your beloved one want to see you sink and cry? Or would your beloved one want you to get up and live your purpose? And the answer was that life has to go on. But in order for your life to keep flowing, you must not put the pressure on yourself that is not necessary. When I was in my mid-20s, one of my best friends would invite me to this group. And this group is particularly Chinese girls. And I guess the main priority for this group was getting married before 30 or getting promoted in their career. But for me, I've always enjoyed a creative pursuit. And creative pursuit requires risk. You don't see the money coming in right away. But once you do receive the money, the amount is exponential. But if I were to again box myself in this limited belief that I need to be married before 30. So let's settle for anyone that doesn't align with my goal so I can get married before 30. I mean, that would be a true suffering. But somehow in Asian culture, they even say this thing about women being expired after they're 30 or something like that. And I'm just thinking to myself, why are you applying these rules for your life? If you are happy being who you are today, if you are genuinely okay with seeing the sunset alone and you'd rather do that than go on dates with people that you don't like, or if you're just genuinely happy with what you're doing right now and you don't have the full capacity to be in that kind of engagement or marriage right now, then why can you not embrace who you are and your progress right now? Why do you need to have a criteria where I can only be a 10 out of 10 if I'm married? I need a ring to define my self-worth. But what happens if somebody takes that ring away from you? What happens if you suddenly outgrow your partner and then you realize, oh shit, I actually got myself in the wrong marriage? See, the time today is different. We are living in 2024 and life evolves differently today. There is technology, entrepreneurship, the cost of homes, the living expenses, and all these things are not the same standard as it used to be, right? So you can't box yourself to the same standard as how things used to be 60 years ago or 20 years ago or 30 years ago. You have to adapt to how the world is working today. Obviously today, the money opportunity is much bigger than in the past, but the chances of somebody building stability with just their nine to five income is just very difficult. So instead of you boxing yourself into a marriage or to settle down when you are not fully, fully established yet, or you haven't reached your fullest potential yet, why not you come back and focus on reaching your fullest potential so that whoever gets to marry you in the end is receiving the 
best version of you, who were so happy with their career progress, who were so happy with who they became along the way. And finally, nine, celebrating who I've become today and being grateful for where I am. See, the main cause of my anxious attachment in the past is that I felt ashamed of being who I am. I felt ashamed of the fact that I wasn't trying to hit certain life milestones and I felt so insecure about being who I am. This insecurity then leads me to feeling abandoned and this abandonment wound then causes me to feel anxiously attached to an idea and that idea is then transferred to an actual human being which is the guy right but if you can separate the guy from the idea and from every single abandonment wound that you have you will realize that your desire for him can dissipate tomorrow if you assign a different meaning to your self-worth if you inherently see your worth now you may still want him but you are totally okay if he doesn't want you and honestly that is impossible anyway because if you feel attracted he's going to want you. But once you truly come to that sense of wholeness by constantly celebrating who you've become, it's like even without you, I'm still a shining star. And with you as well, I'm going to make you the shining star based on the light that I have within myself. Whereas if you have anxious attachment and you're not exactly grateful for where you are, then you are trying to seek light from the guy who doesn't have light. <laughs> the guy has his own set of issues and that's why you guys are attracted to each other. So you don't have light to give to him and he doesn't have light to give to you. So together you guys are taking from each other with not having anything and even still ends up in a reciprocal kind of love then it's the codependent relationship whereas if you can just celebrate every little effort that you put in to better your life whether it's oh my god i actually did wake up at 6 a.m today or oh my god i actually had the courage to start my youtube channel my passion project i feel like i'm taking steps forward to be the best version of me and i'm already proud of that despite the fact that i don't see any external outcomes yet because when the guy doesn't have light to give to you but you're actually giving yourself that light and building it from within there will be so many things besides him that wants to come and share the light with you and even if narcissists and toxic people are attracted to you because your light shines so powerfully you'll be able to set boundaries with them and not draw them into your life and that's how powerful celebrating who you've become is you are validating your inherent world to yourself and it's such an important practice that everyone should commit to every single day okay guys so i'm going to end the video at here again if you guys like this channel feel free to leave a comment down below to let me know what you want to see also if you guys resonate with my work feel free to subscribe because i would love to grow with you on this journey other than that i'll see you in the next video bye bye